everybody welcome back to leveling up from the inside um, this is just a quick video uh, to let you know how my one month pre-op appointment went with my plastic surgeon um, today is July 7th 2020 and I have surgery scheduled for August 3rd 2020 um, quick about me I had gastric sleeve surgery done April of 2019 I have since lost about a hundred pounds and I had skin removal, uh, the circumferential tummy tuck uh, with a muscle repair and lipo. I had that last November. And in August, I am going to be having a breast augmentation, a medial thigh lift, and a brachioplasty on my arms. So let's get right into my visit. I'm super pumped and I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, so the first thing uh, when I met with my doctor, we talked about my breast implant size. Um, for those of you who, who watch my channel, I did post a video on how to determine breast implant size using the RICE test. Um, if you have not seen that video, I'll link it up here so that if you're going to go through this surgery, um, you can definitely figure out a way to figure out what breast implant is right for you. Um, really quickly, I did bring my little falsies that I made, my 300s and my, my 400, my 350 and my 400. The doctor thought these were just the funniest thing. Um, he has seen them before, he's aware of them, but he, he thought it was great that I actually made them myself. Um, before meeting with him, I was leaning towards the 350 and I thought the 400s were going to be too big. However, when I met with him, what he said, and I, have, I guess I have to show you this one, is when I was trying them on at home, see y'all, my, my stuff's pretty flat, is I had kind of put them in my bra um, a little lower, and he said that the implant actually sits up a little higher. So that makes a difference in the overall shape. Um, and then he also mentioned that even though the 400s, when I put them on in the right place, they still looked a little big, but it was just just a tiny bit. He mentioned that they are going to look a little smaller than they looked in the bra because that's going to go under my skin, under my muscle, so it's not going to be like as much. And that'll make up that little difference of, mm, they're just a slight bit too big. Um, but after talking with him and he took my measurements to make sure, because, you know, I'm pretty, pretty narrow here. Um, he took a bunch of measurements and he was like, you know, this is a good size for your shape and your overall shape. Um, so I am super confident uh, in my decision to get the 400s. <clears throat> um, by the way, you guys, I am not a spokesperson for Dr. Thomason. However, I need to give them a huge shout out. Dr. Thomason and his staff are the nicest freaking people you'll ever meet. They all speak Spanish, if that's your thing. So if you are considering coming to Florida for surgery, especially the Miami area, please be careful. It's not all about how much the price is. You're going to have to look into the history of that doctor and see if there's been any not so great stuff. Um, but if you are willing to just go a little bit farther north to Fort Lauderdale, Dr. Thomason is a great doctor um, and his prices are very comparable to what you're going to find in Miami, um, except he he's very highly rated. If you check him out on realself.com, um, I'll try and post that down below. Uh, he's got stellar, stellar reviews, so I can't recommend him enough. And he's super cute. So I don't know if he's single or not. It would be really great if he was. Not that I'm going to hit on him because I, I can be kind of shy, y'all. But I would. If I had the nerve, I would. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to it. So uh, yes, once we met and he kind of set me straight, we decided that the 400s would be the way to go. So I'm super excited about that. Um, another thing that he and I spoke about um, was my brachioplasty. And my concern was with the arm lift, um, I'm not going to show you how much skin I have here. I am going to do a video prior to surgery um, in a couple weeks to show y'all that, but I, I don't need to be bringing out the, that for like every video. Trust me. So my concern was that my arm after the surgery was going to be like super thin and looking good. And then I was going to have all this extra skin under here that I have right now. And it's, it's so unattractive. <laughs> Um, and what he decided was instead of taking my incision line here to the front, he's actually going to take my incision line here to the back and then just pull that back. 
he did say, you know, obviously you're going to have a longer scar and there's going to be a little more discomfort while you're healing, but it, it will pull everything in nicely. I don't, I don't care. The scar, my arm is down. No one's going to see that anyway, unless somebody's sniffing my armpit. And that's just, that's a different video. That's a whole different community altogether, I would imagine. So I'm okay with the scar. Um, another thing that I talked to him about was my thigh lift. Um, I have a, a lot of excess skin in between my thighs. It's probably of all the areas, well, my tummy tuck, I, I, I did have a lot in the front, but of the remaining excess skin, um, definitely my inner thighs are the worst of all as far as the volume of extra skin there. And that um, is also causing my knees to have a lot of extra weight on them. Um, I don't want to offend anyone, but I look like I have old lady knees. Like I really do. I have a lot of rippling and creepy areas. It's just not pretty. Uh, but thankfully he, he gave me some hope and he said, because I'm already at the end of my weight loss journey, I am pretty thin, um, that it's just going to be pretty simple, you know, just moving that skin up and in and, and making everything beautiful because he doesn't have to do a lot of shaping or anything like that. So I am super pumped about that. Goodbye, old lady knees. Mm. Um, so really quickly, I want to go through some of the pre-op tests that you may have to do, um, that I'm going to have to do. The first one I needed to do was a mammogram because I'm having breast implant. Obviously, they want to make sure that your breasts are okay. Um, I'm 47, so I needed a mammogram anyway. So boom, two birds, one stone, one mammal. Um, the next thing you're going to have to do is get your pre-op clearance. Um, so the stuff on my pre-op clearance here, we have a basic metabolic panel, CBC, EKG, PT, and PTT. I, I don't know what that is. Your analysis, your culture, and then obviously your medical clearance letter. Um, in Fort Lauderdale, where the, his office is, I live in Naples, which is on the West Coast. And Dr. Thomason is on the East Coast. On the East Coast, there are a lot more of these med labs that will do all of this in one place and then send them the medical letter. Um, here on this coast, I am not familiar with any place that does that, um, so I'm gonna have to find them. Uh, most of the places here, like you, you know, the EKG and all that stuff is done at your doctor's office, um, but then you have to pay a lot more. So I'm gonna try and find where I can do this next week because this has to be submitted um, 14 days prior to surgery. Okay, I'm on it. Um, the one thing that is major stressing me out, um, that is a new thing is COVID testing. It is July 7th, 2020. We are in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So I need to get a swab, the nasal swab COVID test. Here's the problem. A lot of places will not do a pre-surgical COVID test without charging you a boat ton of money. Like the average price is 150 to 250, which is the one place I found here was 250. On the other coast, it was 150. That is just robbery. I mean, if people want to do a COVID test, they should be able to get the damn COVID test, regardless of the reason. Let them get the damn COVID test. I digress. So what I'm gonna have to do is go up to one of the drive through centers um, or find out if there's a Walgreens or CVS doing it in the area. I did look into this about three weeks ago and I could not find a pharmacy that was doing the COVID testing. So I don't know if because the cases are on the rise again, if that's going to change. But I, like I said, I'm stressed out over it because I have to do it somewhere. And I have to tell them it was because I was exposed. I am not able to tell them it's for pre-surgery because then they will not do it. It's crazy. Um, so today, again, I signed some medical forms. Um, and that was pretty much it from the visit. Um, if you are new, like if you're just looking into plastic surgery and kind of what's required and all of that, you're still meeting with doctors, one thing I do want to know is there is a big difference in pricing with a physician who is attached to a hospital versus one who is attached to a medical or a surgical center. 
Dr. Thomason does work out of a surgical center. I was at the same surgical center when I had my circumferential tummy tuck in November and they were awesome. It's a well oiled machine. The nurses were so sweet. Um, I didn't have any issues there. They were super nice to my mom while she was waiting. Uh, so be mindful of that when you're meeting with doctors and when you're choosing a doctor, that if your doctor is attached to a hospital, you are going to pay thousands more just to be at the hospital versus having a doctor at a surgical center. So um, if you like this information, um, please like the video and join me on my journey, subscribe. Um, I am going to post Dr. Thomason's information below. I am going to also post his real self information. Um, and then I'm going to uh, be posting probably about once a week for the next two weeks in regards to plastic surgery. And then probably like a few days before my surgery, I'll, I'll you know, I'm definitely going to do cover like what I'm taking with me, um, kind of the nerves, because I know after when I had my last surgery, holy nerves, y'all, it was crazy. Um, but it is such a beautiful journey and there are amazing surgeons out there. So if you are on the fence and you're not sure if plastic surgery is for you, look into it. You know what I mean? Talk to people, find a community, get referrals. Um, your doctor is out there. I, if I could send my doctor to every state and everyone, I would, because he is that great. Um, so thank you so much for listening. I will chat with you soon. And um, thank you for following my journey. Bye-bye.